First of all, to the graduates, fantastic. Well done. That's the only two words ever used. When you do something well, well done. You don't need to flatter people and say magnificent, wonderful, all the rest of it. Well done satisfies me. But also, I want to say something you should remember. Your parents, they sacrificed in your intelligence, your love for you. So this is the pay down day. You've got to remember how they invested in you and thank them. And to the professors, you filled your head with the words you need. Well done, professors, fantastic. Now, it's been mentioned about interviews. A thing was in my head about all the way down here, interviews. You will get interviews, there's no question about that. I interviewed a lot of people. Oh, actually, as a, when I left school, when the headmaster called me in at three o'clock in the afternoon, I'm saying, what does he want? It was to tell me my marks weren't good enough. I wasn't going to get, I wasn't going to, get to university. And I had to go home and tell my mum and dad that I wasn't going to university. Christ, you could see that. that. The smoke was dwelling above the, 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 the house. It was amazing. But it was because they expected more of me. I was too wound up in the football team that I played for at school. That I forgot that word, the expectation. And when I left Rangers Football Club, the one thing I took out there was understanding the expectation of a great football club. And all my life after that, expectation. I, I knew what expectation was, and that's what I expected of these players, uh, I had these young players, expectation. And you should have your own expectation, but aim high, it's without doubt. On interviews, I went for an interview to, to um, I, I became a toolmaker first of all, I wasn't a footballer. And, um, my dad says, polish your shoes. Why? He says, polish your shoes. Just a little tip. And don't cross your legs. Right, Dad? And these days in Glasgow, you used to fill your form in. And it's given it, what school did you go to? And if, you know, they want to identify we were a Protestant or a Catholic, that was what Glasgow was in these days, fortunately it's gone. But um, I interviewed a lot of people and uh, for the jobs at United, whether it's physiotherapists or doctors or, or uh, video, video analysis people. And these things always stick my word. The minute he sat down, I'm waiting to cross his legs, scored off of this. <laughs> and I've got grandchildren now, you know, and my sons, I said the same thing to them. I says, and sit forward if you're ready to start today, not tomorrow, you're starting today. And use your personality. My dad says, don't be afraid to ask questions. These are all things that have stuck with me all my life. And, uh, and polish your shoes. <laughs> but my wife um, had a fantastic life. 39 years as a manager. And uh, I have to say that but it wasn't all roses. There wasn't. There was times you had to fight your way through things. You had the determination. You depended on it. And the very thing I want to, to really, the most important point I want to make to you, because it will happen, is failure. Failure. Disappointment. It will happen. It's a part of your life. You cannot let it go without confronting it. Believe me. I'm telling you, and maybe these lads would back this up. I was a better manager after we lost. When we lost a game, the next day I was flying. I'm telling you, I was a, I was a great manager the day after the defeat. Because I could confront the disappointment. I could confront failure. Because it's part of your life. You don't think you're going to go through it without the disappointments. It will happen. And this is where, this is the point. This is where you find yourself. This is when you understand who you are when this happens. And what your education and training you've had before that, 
We'll help you through it, but confront it. Don't accept it. The next day, tomorrow is the day. And I, I think it's really important. The people, rec the, the, I've, I've heard, I've heard of Dean actually. I won 49 trophies. No, 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 don't, no, don't look for it. No, don't, don't, don't clap now. You, can, you do it after. <laughs> but, um, so the question is, how many cup finals did I lose? Now that's the thing that worried me. That's the thing I could tell you every minute the cup finals it was. How we lost it. Does anyone know the answer? Who said that? Well done. Give that boy an award. I lost seven finals. Tom Brady came in my office at one of the games at the end of the season there. He just won the Super Bowl with uh, uh, Tampa. And uh, he asked me why I retired when I did. I says, Tom, I was 71. I've been through the mill and I'll go, he says, he already announced he was retiring. And that was the moment he says, I'm going to come back. And he spoke, I says, you did a great career. Eight Super Bowls, he said, yeah, but I lost one. And he started to tell me every second about how they lost in the last minute against the Giants, when the catcher, what you call them in American football, and the defender slipped as a mount, mounted the challenge, and the receiver caught the ball and jammed it into his helmet before he fell, and they never left his helmet. He says, we lost in the last minute. So that, that tells you about, that, about someone with, in a different sport from me, had the same issues and the same desires to win, the determination. And you, if you've got a self-determination about you, it's as important as any of the abilities you'll ever have. There's no question about that. And uh, in my, my time as a, as a manager, I always thought that um, one thing coaching players, one thing winning things, but you know the best thing? When they left you, they were a better human being. And all that 92 crowd, all these young lads, they verified, they, they, they stand out a mile, they are good human beings. And I think that's a really important thing about, about my life in football, that they turned out right away. So I knew the education they were getting was one thing, could become better footballers? Yes, of course they did. They become great players, and uh, they became internationals. And uh, but they were good human beings, and I think it's so important that. So it's a great. I don't think I, the last time I spoke to an audience was about four or five years ago. I'll need to get warmed up again. <laughs> but uh, nonetheless, it's an opportunity for me to wish you all the best. To give you some advice, don't give in. It's easy to give in. You give in once, you give in twice, you give in all the time you give in. It's just a part of what your makeup is. And don't let your parents down. You know, part of my, you know, this is the thing I did at United. Part of my, my motivation with the players, I used to ask them what their grandfathers did. Some we know, obviously. But the reason was, that I try to get the working class into their brain because to achieve in football, you have to have a working class attitude and ethic of working so hard because if you go through your life working hard, believe me, it's a talent, it's an absolute talent. So I was a manager for 39 years and in my last year, I was still fresh. I was still fresh. I did things to make sure the players stu still understood the energy it was coming from me. I never lost that. And these are the things that, if you go through your life with that, you have been exceptional. So thanks very much. Good luck. It's not easy, but you've got the talent. Do it. <laughs>